going on everyone? It's Bob with Cinnam Fellows again with yet another fun interview. This one is a good one. This one's Damien uh, Leon, the writer, director of All Hallows Eve, Terrifier 1, and the ever-famous now Terrifier 2. Yes, the movie that people are fainting, vomiting, walking out of. We sit, we talk about what kind of elite company he's in. I may or may not beg him to come to Chicago, but we also get into more about the fact of just how this movie has gained a cult following, including Art the Clown. Have a listen and enjoy. And also make sure to check out Terrifier too. Damien, thank you for your time, dude. Uh, so much, especially I'm looking in the back there. I'm seeing a Nightmare Before an Elm Street box set. I, I have the Blu-ray and have yet able to get rid of my DVD copies. No, I still collect physical VD. I have to, man. I was uh, I used to collect VHS when I was a kid. I had a huge VHS collection. Um, I wish I could still showcase them and watch them. But <laughs> the same managed a, a blockbuster, so like that's where I got um, all my fun movies. I worked at Blockbuster for a little bit, a couple of years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually have somewhere. I just moved to a new apartment. Um, a Blockbuster work shirt still in the plastic, just when we were closing. I was like, and this is mine now. Hell yeah, that's awesome, man. But anyway, got a little bit of talk about about this amazing movie behind me here. Oh, thanks, man. Thanks for having me, by the way, dude. It's a dude, pleasure. This is you. amazing. You have no idea how much. Uh, it's funny because I didn't realize you were the same guy who did Frankenstein versus Mummy. Oh, I sure <laughs> I, am. <laughs> I stumbled upon that movie. I, I can't remember where. And me and my buddy watched it and we're just like, oh, this is extremely unique. Like, that's the thing. So many <laughs> horror movies now are so cliche and yeah. boring that you need something to come out and shock you or surprise you and you nailed it on the head in this one. Oh, thank you man i appreciate so, it i mean was it um all hallows eve 83 minutes terrifier one 80 minutes terrifier two two and a half hours how'd we get here <laughs> that's a good question man um i gotta say i Never sat down at the computer and thought of a running time when I was writing the scripts. I never said this has to be, you know, I knew I wanted this to be a, a bigger movie in terms of scope and just what we were, the new ideas that we were bringing to the table, but I didn't want it to be over two hours. So typically your slasher films have, you know, filler in them let's be honest even terrifier one has filler i'm just i'm you know you're trying to get from one kill scene to the other you're not necessarily trying to craft this uh sophisticated story with your with your characters or things like that but on terrifier i was really conscious of crafting really dynamic protagonist and uh intricate story and this was organically the story that came out of me. It was never a question of, ooh, like, how am I going to get from here to here? I have to come up with some bullshit just to pad it out. Like, this was like the, the actual story that I wanted to tell. And I made sure that every scene that was included really, you know, pushed the narrative forward or it introduced a new story elements or a new character, just something where the stakes were being raised and new information was being fed to the audience. Um, you know, so aside from that, sure, I could have I could have trimmed the fat on a bunch of scenes. Um, but at the end of the day, if I really did that, it could have I could have shaved off maybe five minutes. You're still looking at a two hour and 13 minute movie. So it, in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't really change anything. You're going to oh. get a big movie. <laughs> hey, you shouldn't. It, no, no, don't trim anything on this. I was just sat back. I was like, all right. And so obviously you are now in elite company. I mean, uh, Exorcist, Psycho, Good Night <laughs> Mommy, one of my favorite movies of all time, VHS. People are fainting in, wow. yeah. <laughs> this, I mean, you are up there now. Like yeah. you have hit a tier that only so many people have reached or have aspired to reach. That's got to be kind of like amazing, right? Like you are now on the news for this, for just doing exactly what you love to do. It is, man. It's amazing. The word I keep throwing out there is surreal. Um, listen, I didn't, I mean, I, I, I said, I told my crew, I said, look, there are people who are going to walk out of this movie. There's no doubt about it. I knew because we're really, we were really pushing 
the gore in this film. It, it is it is unrated. I mean, it's pretty unprecedented. Uh, there's a three minute kill scene in this movie. Yeah. Uh, so so I knew, you know, I didn't think people were going to be fainting uh, or uh, necessarily throwing up. So it is a, a bit of a badge of honor because uh, movies like The Exorcist and things like that, like you said, had people fainting. So it is kind of cool. Uh, but I want people at the end of the day, I want people having a good time. I think the vast majority of people watching this film are more laughing, cheering, you know, they're not, they're not really passing out because the movie is so blatantly steeped in fantasy. You know, this isn't reality, even though my characters are, uh, I try to make them grounded in reality, but the film is so over the top with its ideas and these supernatural elements that I was hoping that because it's so heavily steeped in fantasy that you could maybe get away with some of the extreme gore. It would be a little more palatable, so to speak. Yeah, some of the scenes I was sitting there and my drama gore hound. I love it. And you know, just give me as much as I can. Um, I mean, the bedroom scene, let's face it, that was, it was fantastic. That was fantastic. Um, and honestly, if I was in the theater watching this, I would be sitting there with my buddies. And I think, I think you're right. I think the people who are fainting and stuff aren't made for this kind of movie. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Right. This isn't for them. I think you made a horror movie fan for people who loved old school slasher movies, uh, specifically of the eighties. You know what I mean? Like uh, Newcomb right. high stuff like that stuff where it's uh, really out there. Now I got to say, this is yeah, probably the best gore I've seen in a long time. I mean, especially like you see Saw movies and yeah, whatever, but this really hit it. Obviously, it's your baby. Was there a specific scene? Like, how are you getting these ideas? Because I got to say, I'm totally into it. Sure. Uh, well, it depends. It depends. Uh, there's so many different kill scenes in this movie. But, um, you know, there's some blatant uh, homages to Maniac, which is one of my favorite slasher movies. Um, we, have a, we have a scalping and we have a, uh, a shotgun blast. <laughs> through a car wi a car window which is totally taken from maniac but we did a different version of it it's from the inside out this time <laughs> um so yeah you, you never know i mean and i love tom savini tom savini is my hero my makeup effects uh idol so that's how i got into filmmaking originally was first through special makeup effects um and i continue to do all the effects in these movies but uh you never know where you're going to get inspiration from uh one of the uh things that inspired me for this big bedroom kill scene was a photo of one of Jack the Ripper's victims. And uh, it was a woman horribly mutilated on a bed. And I said, if I take that image and sort of reverse, reverse engineer it and show how one human can do that to another human, that would be a really sadistic Art the Clown kill, a really crazy set piece. And then it just, it's, well, what is he doing? How does this person, you know, it looks like she's being skinned. Is he cutting body parts off? What's he doing? And then it's just a matter of picking those moments and building these puzzle pieces and these effects to, to flesh out that sequence. Now, so this is your third dance with art. And yeah. thanks to the mid credit scene, <laughs> right. are we going to get another dance with art? Or was that just a, uh, the bow at the end of the curtain? No, 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 no. There's gonna, there's so much more to explore with art and with uh, with Sienna. We really set up our hero and our villain, and we've introduced so many, so many sort of rules and and things. And there's so many questions. So now it's all about answering them and exploring them, and really diving deeper into this ultimate battle of good versus evil uh, that's going on between these two characters. It takes a lot to unnerve me. Again, been a horror movie fanatic for the time. The the horror scenes, none of that got to me. You know what got to me was a little pale girl. That Ooh, got to me. Nice. Good. You know what I mean? Like to me, nothing scarier than a children's choir at the beginning of a movie, thanks to Andy right. and horror, and the little <laughs> pale girl with the slow patty cake. For some reason, that was so yeah. unnerving. Oh, thank you. Man. I, I I gotta say, like when something like that hits me, I'm like, all right, that's genius level. I don't know why that gets to me. But it does. You have this absolute craziness and you have this absolute for at the moment, just innocence playing against each yeah. other. Yeah, they're both now, very childlike. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was just, I have to say, it was very, very cool. So I had to make sure I brought that up. Also, there's another thing. Um, you have your Michael Myers, you have your Freddie, Jason, uh, even Trick or Treat has Sam, Leatherface. I think art is getting up there now. How does it feel like also you said being Savini's being your hero? With all the media attention this is getting, do, would you 
I mean, how can I put it? Would you want Tom Savini just to come in and just hang with you, help? Like, what? Oh, sure. <laughs> and do you, would you take him with art as well? Because I mean, obviously, this is David's. David has become art. Like yeah. David is art. How would you do this with Savini? Just because, like I said, there's so much there. Art is now up there with Sam. How would yeah. you do this with your hero? Well, I don't know because I know that he doesn't typically do special effects anymore, unfortunately. Like he'll he'll come in and he'll do a couple of things here and there. Like I know for a black um phone, uh he did the uh he helped uh design the masks and things like that. But from what I understand, he really will uh, he'll get his students and uh, other effects artists that he knows and he'll give them the gigs and things like that but i mean if listen if this was in the heyday and he was still tackling movies and stuff i would kill to have him do the effects <laughs> for, for a terrifier movie it would be unbelievable it'd be a dream come true i'd love to do them with him you know uh, you could always you could always get him to come on and uh wear that leather vest via dust to dawn you know what i mean sure. even if I mean, he did that scene yeah. Yeah, I mean, he also, well, he acts now primarily, so I would also love to just have him be in the movie somewhere if I if I could get him in there. That would be amazing as well. Um, like I said, with, with this big noise, because, I mean, obviously the horror movie fans saw All Hallows Eve. We saw Terrifier. Now we saw Terrifier 2. And I think this made a big enough sound to maybe be a uh, a calling card for a lot more horror movie fans that maybe aren't sure about what this is to come here. So you said that there will be another terrifier that we will get more art is there anything more we can expect from you or is terrifier is this is this next step this is your baby um well i think terrifier three would be the easiest thing to get going next just because it's uh, it's proven uh and it's successful but um there's so many other stories that i have that i would also love to to tell i mean one of my dream projects is this epic uh george romero-esque zombie film that i would love to make um if i was given the chance to direct a friday the 13th reboot i would jump on that in a heartbeat that's a dream project um and i had this idea with a uh, um sort of another 70s style exploitation type movie that has to do with demons that i can't really go into but um i've pitched that to a few people and something cool might happen there but uh who knows i i, I think that terrifier um uh, Terrifier 3, we should probably strike while the iron's hot, I would say, as well. So it's not something I want to step away from too long and let the let it die out. But we'll see. We'll see. It's still too soon to say. And I got to say, yeah, uh, as many more Grindhouse movies as you can put out, stuff like that, I feel like we don't get enough of those. Yeah. Um, especially yeah. Planet Terror. Tarantino nailed it. Oh, of course. Um, those are my heroes, those guys. Tarantino, Eli Roth, and uh, Rodriguez. They're all amazing. I, I love that. All right. We'll, we'll, get, a, we'll get a big uh, hashtag movement, a grassroots movement to get you to take over Friday 13th, because honestly, the person that did it last time, I can't remember who it is off the top of my head. It was so bad. So, <laughs> so. I mean, it's just there. I don't know, man. There's something about um, a charm or an authenticity from the uh, genuine ones from the '80s that's kind of lost in in all movies now. And I think if if you could, I would try my best to like genuinely recapture that in a in a Friday the Thirteenth reboot. I'd love to actually have it take place in the early '80s um, and just just that whole vibe, that whole atmosphere, and just make Jason scarier than he's ever been and, and more brutal than he's ever been. Uh, I think would be amazing. There's so much potential there. Yeah, don't don't give him a bow and arrow. I I, I still don't know how that was a thing. <laughs> no, no, I yeah. Well, listen. <laughs> <laughs> well, Damien, thank you so much, dude. Uh, please, you got to come to Chicago on these horror movie conventions. I'm right outside. I'd come and love to shake your hand and get oh, a poster right. signed from you. I think uh, I think we're going to be doing a Days of the Dead Chicago at some point. So we're yep. we're we're everywhere. We're everywhere. Throw it out there, and I will be there with bells on, brother. You well, got congratulations on the success of this movie. You deserve every bit of it. You worked hard, you can tell. And from a huge horror fanatic, thank you for bringing a little bit of that childlike, like, all right, blood and guts. You know, it sounds weird to say oh, childlike man. and that in the same sentence. But thank you so much for it. And I'll look forward to number three. Thanks, buddy. My pleasure, dude. I'm so glad you enjoyed it. So thank you so much. It means a lot. All right, Damien. Good luck to you, brother. And uh, I'll, hopefully I'll see you in Chicago. Thanks, buddy. Definitely, man. All right. Take care. Take care. I mean, there, there you go. Uh, I 
fanboy out a little bit. Um, a lot of it. The movie's a blast. Um, if you're a 70s, 80s horror fan, the slasher, the gore, the, all that, see this movie. And it's great to see that another fan out there is making the money. And here's hoping he makes that uh, Friday the 13th. Anyway, so until next time, peace.